I'd like to thank you for, for spending some time with me this morning. These are part of a, a, a series of semi-ad hoc <laughs> hangouts on air to do this week. And uh, I thought of you first uh, simply because of the, uh, uh, you know, the back and forth we've had over the last few weeks about, uh, about your, your skills and your, your skill set and your obvious dedication to communities and developing communities of action, uh, especially in Chicago. And I thought maybe we'd start, uh, you could kind of give us a little background on, your, uh, on that experience. Well, just, uh, I, I, I lo, let me post a uh, link into the vlog that uh, uh, helps you on this. Uh, I, I've created some concept maps that, uh, if you look at them, it, it shows that I, my involvement goes back to 1965, uh, uh, and that's when, uh, if you're able to open up this map into a, a screen and, and look at it, um, I, I, I went to college in the 60s. I, I grew up in a small rural town, uh, and after college, I was in the Army for three years. Uh, and then I came to Chicago in 1973 uh, as an advertising copywriter for the Montgomery Ward Corporation. And uh, shortly thereafter, I got recruited to be a, a tutor uh, working with a fourth grade boy. Uh, in a company-sponsored volunteer program that had started in 1965. Uh, I didn't really know anything about what I was doing in advertising, and I didn't know anything about what I was doing in uh, tutoring, but my background in history and in uh, uh, Army intelligence was collect information uh, showing how other people did stuff and then learn from that information for what you do. Uh, so I've spent the last, uh, I spent 17 years learning how to uh, build corporate advertising programs, and uh, I spent uh, about 40 years learning how to recruit kids <laughs> and volunteers uh, uh, in tutor mentor programs, uh, I, and I spent a lot of time thinking about uh, uh, borrowing from one to the other. Uh, at, at Montgomery Ward, we had 400 stores all over the country, and we used weekly advertising uh, to draw customers to those stores. We also had teams of people at the corporate office working to help make sure each store had well-trained people and, and, and stuff like that. That's, that's the concept map. Um, and uh, so, I, so the activities of a corporate office of supporting multiple stores, uh, I began to think, how do we support multiple tutor mentor programs operated in all the neighborhoods of a city like Chicago where they're most needed? And it's really the same thinking. Uh, you need teams of people uh, working to uh, help make sure programs are where they need to be. Uh, uh, they have well-trained people, they have uh, uh, learning resources, they have the dollars to operate, um, and, you, and you need people doing uh, advertising, trying to draw volunteers and donors and, and, and youth to these programs and keep them involved year after year. So uh, it's been about a 40-year journey, and uh, in the middle of the journey, I began to realize people didn't understand what I was talking about because they haven't really <laughs> spent time thinking about it themselves. So I started to draw pictures to try to communicate my ideas. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And uh, the pictures fall into categories like uh, geographic mapping, uh, 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 which uh, you can have a whole bunch of activity, but unless you map it, you don't know if the activity is in all the places you need to uh, be operating. Uh, uh, concept maps, like the one here, uh, help you uh, uh, put complex ideas out on paper. Uh, if you uh, up in the corner of that map, in the upper uh, left-hand corner, if you click on the node, then that'll take you to another map, uh, and you just keep going map after map after map. Uh, so the, the concept mapping uh, is a form of visualization. Uh, that's it right there if you click there. Cabrini Connections and TMC Timeline? Yep. Okay. So the, you know, the first map uh, I talked about from 1965 to uh, 1990, and then the second map is talking about 1992 up to the present. And uh, uh, each of the nodes, uh, uh, so through that, uh, you can see that my involvement has been in operating a single program and in operating something called the Tutor Mentor Connection, intended to help lots of single programs be operating in uh, more of the places where they need to be. 
Uh, third type of uh, graphic, though, is uh, I, I put a link in the uh, vlog to uh, 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 Pinterest. If if you were to search Google for the word tutor mentor, uh, or if you were to go into my Pinterest page, you would see uh, all kinds of images that I've created over uh, uh, many different years I, I, to try to help communicate these ideas. Some of these images have been created by interns who have worked for me uh, to communicate those ideas themselves. And, and this is when I go into the, uh, the CL MOOC and the ET MOOC and I, I hear, I see all the great ideas that educators have for engaging youth. Uh, and I believe that educators could be engaging youth in community problem solving uh, and applying some of these ideas of visualization and uh, videos and so forth where youth learn to communicate ideas uh, and strategies that draw adults to do things that adults don't do consistently right now. Yeah, I think um, I think when I usually ask somebody to uh, tell them tell me a little bit about themselves, they do, they usually don't come up with a concept map, Daniel. <laughs> so <but> this is <laughs> this is really I mean this is your genius. This is um, this is what you keep bringing to uh, to CL MOOC that I love so much. You know, last year when we talked about maps. Um, you know, we, we talked. You you brought you brought up maps. Uh, recently, you you brought up some really great software about uh, systems thinking software that I'm just now mm -hmm. trying to get into. Uh, seems to me like you're uh, you're trying to provide us filters uh, for our community. Is that do you see yourself in, in that role? Well, it's definitely an intermediary role. Uh, the uh, uh, there was a uh, book. Read called the Spider and the Starfish. Uh, are you familiar with that book? Uh, yeah, I've uh, I've read it, but it's been a long time. That's that book has been out for a while. Yes, it has, and uh, it talks about the decentralized organizations. Uh, it talks about the role of intermediaries. Uh, it talks about uh, uh, movements and how movements uh, 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 were the result of uh, a few catalysts, uh, but other people taking stronger roles over time. Um, and then it talked about the, uh, the role of blended organizations such as uh, eBay and Wikipedia uh, that have created platforms on the internet uh, where millions of independent owners and users could uh, 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 be part of those platforms uh, uh, engaging for a common purpose. And uh, uh, that book uh, is one of uh, those that I point to off to, to try to illustrate what I do. I, I, I've been building a platform of information that could be used by, uh, uh, on one level, it could be used by uh, youth and volunteers in a tutor mentor program. On another level, it could be used by the leaders of a tutor mentor program. On a higher level, it could be used by leaders in a community to make tutor mentor programs available throughout the community. Uh, it can be used by a nation to make sure that programs like this are in all the cities and states they need to be. Uh, but it can also be used by other people focusing on other issues uh, in their own form of problem solving. Uh, like CL MOOC? <laughs> uh, well, CL, CL MOOC is a community of people who are located in different places and uh, uh, have some interest in common. Uh, if a subgroup of CL MOOC, for instance, said, "I want to. I love that TED idea of uh, youth engaged in uh, technology in a school." Uh, if they begin to say, "Okay, now let's map all the schools in Chicago or Detroit or New York, uh, and be and do a survey to say which of them already uh, incorporate this." And, and put flags on the map so that you can build a visual understanding of what schools already do this. Now they can begin to say, could we connect those schools in a form of MOOC so they're sharing ideas with each other? And as they're doing that, they can begin to say, well, now how do we reach out to other schools that don't have this and right. that, that we do things to help them uh, grow this program over time? Uh, that type of a sub group has a focus. It says, what are the things we do over a 12-month period that repeats year after year that would result in more uh, neighborhoods having technology-driven schools and technology-driven schools 
resulting in kids that come in at seventh and eighth grade uh, graduating uh, six years later and uh, going into work or jobs or careers in the, in right. the five or six years after that. So uh, uh, the CL MOOC is 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 I think a horizontal network. It's it's got a lot of conversations that are of interest to its members, but a vertical network would be a group of those members taking on a specific focus and then working toward that goal uh, year after year after year. Uh, uh, the systems thinking people uh, have some pretty good mapping of, of that type of an idea. It's, it's, a, it's a process of uh, action research that is secular. The, the solving one problem uh, results in a new problem that needs to be solved on an ongoing basis. So, um so CL MOOC is uh, kind of a diffuse. I, it's more of a network than a community, isn't it? You know, we have a, a set of interests that we share, but uh, and the, that sharing can take the form of action where and when we are. But as you repeat the CL MOOC and do things in between, it becomes a community because a community is is, is people building relationships with each other. Uh, you and I, for example, uh, would not have met if the CL MOOC had uh, not launched last year and if you hadn't been active in it and if I hadn't been active in it uh, and and then if if you hadn't reached out and said, hey, that, Dan, that's neat, let's talk more. Uh, right. over, over time, a lot of those relationships can develop as long as the organizers of the MOOC recognize they need to keep it going uh, uh, year after year after year. Uh, within that, then the mapping begins to be uh, important because uh, if you look at uh, the map, uh, like in Chicago, uh, 11 million people in the Chicago region, I only see about four or five people on the map from the Chicago region. That now maybe there's more than that that are in the MOOC but not, didn't add themselves to the map. But uh, for right now, we've got a long way to go before there would be enough people in the Chicago region in the MOOC who could begin to say, are there things we could do with these ideas that would have a greater impact on young people in our uh, geographic area? And that's true for uh, uh, all different cities. You know, if you, uh, while the MOOC has a lot of people in it, the map by uh, city clusters doesn't have a large representation in uh, too many cities from what I can see. Yeah, one of the big problems we have in a, in a MOOC is knowing exactly who we are. And I think you mentioned that, you know, is, uh, you know there are, may only be a few people on the map but there are also a lot of people who, and, and this phrase has kind of gotten a bad rap, but I, I kind of like it, is our word, is they lurk. And to me, lurkers are kind of the, the dark matter, if you're going to talk in physics terms, you know, the dark matter of the, of, the, uh, um, of the universe for communities is that we, we don't really know how far we reach. With, this with is our, true. And, and I, I, I'm a... Uh, uh, a lurker uh, more than I'm an active participant in many of these things. I just don't have the time, and nobody else does either, no. to get as deeply involved, read everything, do everything. Exactly. Uh, so that, but but are you familiar with a group called the Webheads? Uh, from way back. In fact, I I think I belonged to the Webheads when they first came out, and that's been a long time ago. But that's they're still around, right? Oh, definitely. In fact, uh, I, I've been active in that group. Uh, in fact, my commitment to being part of the MOOC and this connected learning really comes out of my experiences with the webheads. Uh, I've uh, uh, and this is an example of a group. Uh, they're uh, they're English as second language teachers from different parts of the world who have begun connecting with each other in uh, uh, web communities and webinars and, and all kinds of different sharing. Uh, on a regular basis to the point where relationships, strong relationships, have uh, been created among many of the people in that group. Uh, they have an uh, email listserv that's going on right now. In fact, there's a researcher from, uh, I believe, the United Kingdom who has surveyed people uh, uh, to build an understanding of that community. And I just saw a conversation a couple of weeks ago about lurkers, about people who 
uh, they got the WebHead's email. They they followed the conversation, uh, uh, but they never uh, um, went deeper than that. And 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 yet they're a very rich and important part of the community. Yeah. I I've got the WebHeadsInAction.org on the screen share right now. Is this what you're talking about right here? That should be it. Okay. It uh, it seems very. Uh, very old school, but uh, just looking at it, it looks like there's a, an unbelievable amount of uh, of connection that you could that you could do inside of that. Uh, the, the, this group of people is uh, probably some of the most advanced thinkers on uh, uh, technology and learning that I've ever run into, and uh, 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 they're constantly uh, uh, bringing up. Uh, uh, New ways of using the technology, and and, and in ways that they're helping each other, yeah. um, and uh, uh, so this goes back uh, well, about 15 years, and uh, uh, it's it's. Uh, hold on just a second. I apologize. No problem. I can't I can't talk to you right now. Goodbye. Uh, this side. Uh, uh, this community is really a, a, a forerunner, if you will, for what I think the MOOCs can be. You know, uh, if if uh, if they grow uh, and continue operating the way they are. Yeah, I see that they also have hangouts, and it looks like they're not uh, they're not falling down on the on developing new technology to connect. Um, I um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today. It maybe seems a little tangential, but um, um, it's the notion of play is the subject of our uh, make cycle this week. Uh, Joe Dillon and I are leading leading it this week, and uh, I was curious. I've been reading a lot about play. Um, Peter Gray's uh, research on play is play is kind of an evolutionary adaptation that that we we have to have we've had to have to survive, and. Uh, I've been thinking about your organization there and how it probably couldn't have survived unless there was some sort of notion of play in, uh, you know, at play as tutor as, as someone who plays or mentor as someone who plays with, with folks. Do you, you have any thoughts on that? Well, change the word play to fun mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, or enjoyment. And the the interaction of, of a uh, uh, a youth and a volunteer in a tutor mentor program uh, has to have some degree of uh, enjoyment uh, and bonding uh, to motivate them to keep coming back uh, on a regular basis. Uh, from an organizational standpoint, uh, I always tried to organize things that engage the kids and volunteers in group activities uh, uh, together or uh, uh, with the adults or the kids uh, in order to create a socialization across mm -hmm. the group that would create more bonds and more reasons why people would participate, uh, especially uh, because things don't always work out uh, as smoothly as, as people would want them to work out. Um, the uh, within that, then we began to organize. Uh, uh, so, in, in, in the tutor mentor program I led, uh, every youth uh, and volunteer were matched in a one-on-one -on -one relationship, and some of this uh, went for four or five years. Uh, but in addition to that, volunteers who came in from different business backgrounds uh, uh, would begin to say, "Well, gosh, uh, we all come from a technology background. Could we help the organization have computers? And could we organize?" A subgroup of youth and volunteers on a different night than our regular meeting night, where we begin to share our enthusiasm and passion for using computers uh -huh. uh, as part of a club activity. Um, and through that, uh, 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 same thing could be for uh, people creating videos. Let's teach kids to do videos. Uh, uh -huh. People that do art, let's teach kids to do art. So the volunteers can share uh, their enthusiasm for something uh, uh, in activities that. Uh, are, are, are motivational, they're fun, uh, uh, they offer kids, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're working with kids who in their own home and neighborhood don't have as much attention and uh, 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 learning opportunities as is naturally available to kids maybe in more affluent areas. 
Yeah. So uh, uh, it's these extra learning activities around the core 101 tutoring and mentoring that I feel really, uh, I, I call this a mentor-rich process. You know, that the, 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 the mentors, by the extra learning they bring into the organization, uh, add to the 101 uh, 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 relationship building that is ongoing. And uh, learning what organizations actually do think the same way uh, and helping them connect to each other is one of the challenges of what I've been trying to do for a long time. I, I, I really like that expression, mentor-rich environment. So I'm going to have you put on your... Uh, your uh, uh, advisor hat here, and um, maybe you can give us at CL MOOC some ideas on making our environment more mentor rich. Now, the one the one that you bring up is really cool. The notion of a club, and I'd never really thought of us as being a digital club, but you know, I think you're right about that. It's this notion of clubness. But are there other things besides clubs that you would, that you would recommend to us to make mentor rich well, environment? I just posted a link into the VLOC. So as as um, as I uh, explore these ideas, uh, what I've done is uh, uh, begun to create a, a PowerPoint and PDF uh, uh, essays that uh, uh, illustrate the idea in a way that I can put it on the website and other people can find it and look at it at their own time. Uh, uh, my blog is intended for the same purpose. Uh, the, uh, I've been writing a blog since 2005 and the articles uh, uh, from six years ago are as useful uh, uh, for today uh, as the articles from the past. Um, did that link open up for you? It's a described um, document. Let's see. I'm trying to find it right now. What I'm getting is is this the uh, yeah scribe document? I've got it right yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I, this uh, there's about sixty of them on this uh, scribe uh, right now, and so the uh, 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 in terms of the community, uh, uh, a few members of the community could begin to create visualizations representing what it is they, uh, uh, in what their vision is and, and what are the, uh, uh, who are the people who need to be involved to help make that vision happen and what's the timeline look like and, uh, and so forth. So that uh, as a few people, and, and, and this can be work that, that people do with kids. Uh, uh, I believe young people uh, uh, could be engaged in this. So taking the make cycle, uh, uh, all the different making that I've seen in the CL MOOC and the ET MOOC over the last couple of years, and 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 make for a purpose, not not just make for learning the tools of making something in and for your personal uh, enjoyment. Uh, but uh, focus what you make on something that you want to make happen, uh, whether it be a, a, a stronger CL MOOC community, uh, what does that mean, and, and uh, uh, what does it look like, and how do you make it happen. So uh, as a few people begin to do this, other people can add on or create their own versions and, and uh the things that I show here could be recreated over and over and over by a growing number of people, resulting in better uh, versions that communicate more effectively and engage more people, uh, where as an internet activity, the, the people engaging could be from all over the world, but as a, as a real world activity, the result of that engagement could be taking place in cities and neighborhoods all over the world. So, so what you what you're talking about there is is um, um, repurposing, remixing, mashing stuff up uh, so that it serves a, a larger purpose and one that is kind of biased towards action. Is that right? Yes. 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 And and the uh, uh, so in in the uh, um, let me point to something else. 
So the 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 illustrated essays are one part of my library, and um, a a a section with uh, links uh, is another part of the library. And um, let me uh, give you a. a So I'm posting that in the vlog. And and so uh, I divide my web library into four categories. Uh, uh, one category is uh, research that people have aggregated uh, that shows uh, uh, poverty as a as a root cause of a whole bunch of other uh, things that we don't want to have happen. Uh, and another uh, section is uh, 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 resources on how do you if you if you want to build a tutor mentor program, uh, uh, what are all the things you need to know and who can you learn from to uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you can learn from other people uh, and and apply what they're doing to what you do. Uh, but a third section is process improvement and, and collaboration and innovation, where. Uh, that section of the library is, is one where uh, the ideas are uh, visualization and mapping and collaborate. You, know, you can learn from other people and, and process ideas uh, uh, and, and innovation ideas and apply that to uh, uh, your own problem solving where you are. Um, a, a MOOC could be devoted around, uh, here you are. So if you, if you click up in that uh, red box up in the uh, uh, right corner, if you had clicked the node underneath the, uh, uh, the, the, at the bottom there, yeah, and open that. And so this shows different yeah. sections of that part of the library. So if you, if you click one of the nodes under uh, one of those uh, blue boxes. Like under MOOCs? Uh, uh, the one that says, uh, yeah, you click the one on MOOC. I, I think that'll take you someplace. But uh, go on to where, where it says process improvement. and uh, Process improvement. That's right at 12 o'clock. Ah, there we go. OK. And click on that link. Okay. This is uh, just a side note. This is uh, the technology I still find to be semi miraculous. I live at the end of a very long DSL line, <laughs> and here <laughs> I am talking to you. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still a real fanboy of stuff like this. Well, never you're, you're doing well. Uh, so scroll down on that page. Okay, it's uh, yeah, I started lagging and now it's now it's messing up on me. <laughs> it's still loading, I think. Can you point me to something that is on the screen right now that we could? Well, what, uh, these boxes actually, if you click into them, they point to different sections of the library. But uh, okay. uh, what you've got to see below the graphic boxes will be uh, 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 the actual links out to other people's websites with uh, websites related to that particular topic, uh, which in that case was process improvement. And uh, the point of that is is that uh, uh, a MOOC could be developed around any of these particular topics in terms of how do we apply all of these uh, ideas on uh, mapping and visualization, and innovation, whatever, toward uh, 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 a solving a particular problem or many problems in our own uh, community. So if, if you think of the internet as a gathering place of people from many locations, the uh, subgroups of that could be focused on specific locations and the web libraries of information could be resources for learning uh, on an ongoing basis. One of the one of the things we're doing, Daniel, is uh, we do have a, a part of the MOOC that's called the Make Bank, and uh, this is kind of user generated, crowdsourced, uh, uh, usable materials um, 
for people to make their own stuff and to, to also add their own tutorials and uh, come up with examples of stuff. So that's really what you're talking about, isn't it? Is it that sense of, of, um, of community creation of yeah. tools? Yeah, but uh, 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 and, and let, let me uh, if if you think of a, a blueprint, uh, uh, a blueprint for building a building that uh, you start out with an architectural drawing that says this is the finished product, uh, and then you have a stack of uh, uh, papers where uh, the bottom page says let's clear the land, uh, and and then it, uh, let's build the foundation, and then let's do the uh, basement. So it works from the bottom up. Uh, to a page on each page, a diagram saying this is how different uh, uh, subcontractors with different expertise have to work together in order to achieve what uh, is intended on that page of the blueprint. And then you go to the next page and the next page and the next page. Uh, you can't do page 34 until you've done page 33 and 32 and 31 uh, because they're out of sequence. And uh, uh, if uh, using different visualization tools, uh, uh, you, you could create a a a, uh, a blank blueprint of uh, uh, the information you're trying to organize uh, using a concept map or something like that. And I, I put a link in the vlog to one of my concept maps uh, that relate to this. Uh, but then you could aggregate information into specific nodes related to that particular topic of interest. So. Uh, uh, one type of information gathering is, is, is random. Let's, let's fill in a blank piece of paper with listings of things we all know. And over time, that grows to be a huge thing, but uh, uh, it's unwieldy in terms of how people draw from it and apply what's on the list to a particular uh, group interest or problem-solving interest. If, on the other hand, you start out saying, let's create a blueprint that, organize, that, sh that shows the buckets we need to fill uh, and then invite people to put information into these different buckets, then as, as the information is growing, people can be going into the buckets and pulling ideas out and applying them even as they go. Yeah, the whole idea of um, creating a scaffold and then letting people fill in the blanks is a pretty potent one, I think, especially when you're working in a, a community that uh, becomes bigger and bigger. Um, I uh, There were just a couple other things, Daniel. I know you're a busy guy, um, but uh, wh one of the most interesting things that uh, – this is kind of a, a, a thing I discussed with Joe this morning. We were talking about you and your – and how you kind of – appeared on the scene kind of out of nowhere uh, um, and at first <laughs> and don't take this wrong because it's really the wonderful thing about you is at first we wondered is, is this guy just spamming us you know he's just coming on all hot and heavy about these tutor programs how does that relate to what we're doing and after each blog post it was you know you related it to yourself you know you weren't you weren't uh, uh, we you weren't um, trying to, you didn't have any secret agenda to sell us anything, um, but your passion is just so powerful that uh, we almost uh, blocked you because of that. <laughs> how do you, how do you, um, how do you deal with people who, you know, I'm just utterly enthusiastic about MOOCs and about their, their possibilities, as, as you are about the tutor mentor programs and uh, Mapping and visualizations as tools to uh, bring people together. How do you um, how do you handle uh, trying to uh, trying to motivate uh, get people involved? Uh, you know the the whole human side of this uh, without appearing to be, um, for lack of a better word, a jerk. <laughs> do Do you remember the uh, Clue Train Manifesto? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I was one of the signers of that back uh, in the late 90s, and it said that a few people can change the world uh, and, and, and get past all the gatekeepers of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Internet's a great tool. Uh, uh, you, can, you can share your own ideas on uh, uh, your own websites and places, uh, and anyone can come and dig as deep as they want. 
but the reality is, is uh, you have to be out in other people's spaces uh, uh, to help uh, uh, draw attention to those ideas and bring people together. Uh, I've always tried to be relevant in uh, uh, contributing when I go into other people's space and uh, uh, not to, I, I don't uh, try to say, look at Dan Basil, and Dan Basil is the greatest guy in the world. I say, look at this idea. It's relevant to what you're talking about, and maybe it could stretch your thinking of what you do. Yeah. And um, frankly, I try to find other people and encourage them to do the same thing because me by myself uh, isn't going to have uh, much impact on changing the way people work to help people in poor areas. Um, the uh, I, you got to be a little bit thick-skinned about it because uh, there's been a few people that have said, "Dan, we don't want you there because you're spamming <laughs> us," and I don't I don't see it as spammy. Uh, no. But I no, I, no, we don't I uh, you know, and I and I, I try to be uh, uh, cautious in terms of how frequently I uh, uh, contribute into uh, anyone's group, um, and I'm selective on where I go uh, mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, uh, what the relevance is. Uh, and uh, I'm enthusiastic in terms of uh, when I find a group that is, I think, doing some really good things, I'm active in sharing what they do in other media. Uh, again, going back to the starfish, I, I, my library says these are, these are things I found that I think are really important. And while I may not be able to explain it very well, I'll put them in my library because the next guy coming along, uh, they then can find that and do their own digging into it. Uh, uh, and uh, learn it at their pace. Uh, so uh, uh, that's that's what this worldwide internet's all about. I mean, you you if if you just uh, uh, sit back in your own space, uh, not much going to change. Agreed, agreed. And I think um, your attitude towards um, um, trying to find other folks who are who want to mentor and to tutor is a very profound one that is kind of uh, cross crosses all possible lines um, and this week I think what we're trying to do is to be as playful as possible about some things that are deadly serious um, including uh, learning and the uh, the uh, some of the hijacking of learning that's gone on by folks who are interested in <laughs> money more than uh, minds, souls. Well, yeah, uh, uh, the focus on tutoring and mentoring uh, uh, in some ways narrows people's understanding of what I'm doing. Uh, uh, I focus on mentoring it, uh, because the volunteer involvement in the life of a young person made possible by an organized program uh, brings more people from non-poverty areas into this movement where some of them begin to become leaders. I, I started as a volunteer myself, so I, I, I'm just encouraging uh, more people to get involved on the same path. Uh, so that uh, I don't know many other forms of engagement that encourage the weekly, ongoing, week after week, month after month engagement that leads to that type of empathy and 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 uh, uh, leadership development as mentoring does in the type of structure I talk about. Uh, with that said. Uh, the larger part of what I do is a problem-solving strategy. It's an information-based problem-solving uh, uh, that uh, could be duplicated uh, uh, to address any problems. Uh, 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 mentor programs, if you look at a map of Chicago, there's 200,000 kids living in poverty neighborhoods spread uh, in a big geographic area. There needs to be lots of programs uh, in order to reach kids in all those places. Well. If you were talking about uh, food banks or if you were talking about adopted agencies or any other service that needs to be geographically close to where a client uh, lives, uh, the, you would have the same situation of probably not enough services available in all the places they need to be uh, and not enough of them uh, being as consistently funded as they need to be in order to be good at what they do. Uh, therefore, uh, anyone 
could take on a role similar to mine that says, can we learn who's already out there and help them and then begin to identify where the voids are and fill them with other people who could fill those voids. And uh, that type of problem solving uh, uh, leads to how do we get other people involved, who should be involved, what are the ideas we can learn from. You know, all the information that I've aggregated uh, is, is, uh, could be therefore applied in different cities and in different uh, uh, problem solving areas without ever using the word tutor mentor. I, I think this is uh, this is very profound stuff. It's it's uh, it's logistics plus empathy, which is uh, to me is a, a prescription for success. Daniel, um, I, the last question I always like to ask people from my reporting days was is um, you know is there any um, any question that I haven't asked or something that you really feel the need to answer um, personally uh, that you might want to want to talk about for just a few minutes, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Well, I really appreciate uh, uh, a that you guys didn't kick me out of the group, uh, uh, and b <laughs> yeah, you took yeah you took the time to read the blogs and 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 you got. Uh, 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 build, begin to build your own understanding and that's led us to talking today. Uh, my goal in the group is to evangelize this type of involvement so that a growing group of people within your community and similar communities begin to say not only will I take some time to read what Dan's doing, I'm going to duplicate what Dan's doing, I'm going to be Dan in some other place. Uh, uh, and when that happens, uh, uh, using network analysis and all kinds of different things, you know, uh, imagine a map uh, uh, layer uh, that would say uh, you can look at it, see flags on a map, and when you click on that flag, you would see people doing exactly the same things. They're they're building web libraries, they're building mapping, they're they're doing things to bring people together uh, uh, on a daily basis, on an ongoing basis, to solve a problem, and. Uh, uh, you know, you and I both have gray hair, I think, uh, and that means that we're not going to be here forever. Uh, and the problems that are, uh, we're leaving behind to our children won't be solved unless other people uh, pick up the baton uh, uh, with passion and with creativity and with uh, uh, energy uh, to carry this forward. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm uh, pleased to spend time talking to you or talking to anyone else, uh, uh, the goal is that uh, other people take, some, take the ownership and, and, and going back to the spider and the starfish, this is a movement, it's not a Dan Basil thing. Yeah, that's, it really is and it's, uh, you're, you're my Archimedes, Daniel, who, with the lever long enough to give me a lever long enough and I can move the earth. I really think that is exactly what you're trying to do, and that's a that's an inspiration to all of us. Well, there's um, another thing in the spider to starfish, and and, and uh, talking about movements. In many cases, the people who start a movement are never really remembered. It's other people who come on with better skills, better organization ability. Uh, uh, so there, there's other people that will hopefully pick up the baton who may have a lot more success applying these ideas uh, toward helping people than what I've been able to do during my years in doing this. And uh, I certainly look forward to such people uh, uh, coming forward. Yeah, I think uh, we don't um, hail failing enough because uh, there's uh, certainly a lot of failing that has to be done to get getting to done. So. You know, but I don't think of any of your work as failure at all. I think it is just results that have built and built on each other. And I really appreciate you taking the time today to uh, to share some of those. And we will be uh, we'll be publishing this online so that other people can do it. And I'll probably stick it into a vlog so that uh, so that the other people can comment on it and Good. share it. And uh, uh, try to try to include the links that you've mentioned here and point the folks to your to your blog and do a blog post about it. So, uh, you know, you you know, you've keeping you're keeping me too busy. <laughs>
<laughs> that's that. You know, the challenge we have is there's too much information and not enough time. Uh, right. uh, and uh, if you go back into my blog, uh, uh, I tag the different articles, and, and one tag focuses on learning, and uh, uh, it repeats over and over. How how do we how do we uh, absorb or how do we deal with all this information? Uh, because no adult who's got a full-time job and a family and all their personal issues really is going to have the time to dig into this as deeply as uh, uh, as you know, I, I spent 40 years learning what I'm learning and that's not a quick step so <laughs> we have to be thinking in a longer view in terms of when do we begin to uh, uh, bring people into this information even while they're kids and then how do we keep them engaged in this information learn it a little bit of a time over a long period of time you know a lifetime of, of learning right. uh, because the uh, and I other people are writing about this I, I, I saw a human resources study out of uh, uh, Deloitte uh, uh, a few weeks ago uh, talking about how corporate managers are, are concerned about uh, the amount of information uh, information overload to call it mm -hmm. uh, and then I saw a paper uh, uh, out of the Naval Postgraduate School that I'm reading right now uh, from another community I'm part of, uh, uh, talking about the same thing. Uh, there's so much information, we're so disconnected. Uh, how do we build communities uh, 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 where people are able to dig into this information and use it toward uh, the goals of the community? So uh, we're we're still in the infancy of the internet and uh, uh, the early stages of how we support communities of people uh, like an eBay, like a Wikipedia, uh, who all share a common interest in a, uh, uh, for something and, 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 and the platform uh, supports their involvement in, in, all, in many different ways that uh, need to be uh, evolving over time. Yeah. So thank I, you. I thank you too. I think you're on to something there, Daniel, that communities are become are, are going to become absolutely essential as filters uh, for information because no one it's beyond beyond the idea. I mean, the idea that anybody would know everything disappeared when the book was invented. So, <laughs> you know, uh, the idea that communities filter information for us and that we have to we have to belong to communities in order to. Uh, Survive the tide of the tsunami of the internet. I think is a is a is a supremely valid one. Uh, so thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you on Google Plus. And uh, I should send you the link to the to our Facebook community as well. Uh, okay. If, uh, if you're interested, <laughs> more information the process. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's. I, I, it, it, it's really difficult. There's so much to interact with. It, it's hard to uh, uh, do your daily work of managing all this stuff while you're out interacting and learning new things. Uh, but uh, I look forward to it, and uh, I, I thank you guys for being in year two. I look forward to year three and four, and uh, uh, that uh, that would be good. Thank you so much, Daniel. We appreciate you coming today. Enjoy Bye -bye. your weekend and uh, the holidays. Same to you. Enjoy the fourth. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.